Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and in this podcast we're going to cover a domain 4 part 2. In domain 4 part 1 we have covered till firewall and now we're going to talk about the part 2. In this part 2 we're going to discuss about the one important section which is called protocols. If you take example of CISSP domain 4, the overall protocols has been classified into three category. The one is called as a authentication protocol one is dial up protocol and third is secure communication protocol it is very important for you that you really need to understand how this protocol works then only you can able to answer where it works it is starting with first remote communication protocol one of the one of them is called ssh now ssh is a replacement for telnet which support the interactive test oriented communication over the tcp now what you need to understand is what is the biggest reason of using ssh so if you're remotely managing firewall servers and executing any kind of a uh, commands on the remote systems we use ssh but on the other side there is a concern if ssh port number 22 is open on the internet anyone can do the brute force attack on that so there is a possibility in the exam it can be a combination of two question sets example the question can be start from domain 5 talk about the idas and all that and the ssh port is open and then there is a possibility of doing a brute force attack another important thing you need to understand from security point of view it offer four important function one is called strong encryption second is server authentication third is integrity protection and fourth is called as a compression Another thing you need to understand is TLS and SSL. You should really understand the difference between TLS 1.0, 1.1, I think 1.2, 1.3. So that's something you should know that. And the biggest reason of using TLS over SSL is TLS can also encrypt the UDP and SIP traffic. Moving ahead, we talk about authentication protocol. So we have a three type of authentication protocol: PAP, CHAP, and EAP. PAP send the data in a plain text, so anyone can able to intercept. It is more like a static authentication. CHAP on the other side encrypt the nonce. We send the response of the nonce. So CHAP is not vulnerable for man in the middle attack. CHAP is more like a dynamic authentication, and it also prevent the replay attack. The third one is called as a EAP. EAP is is basically a framework to enable the many type of authentication technique to be used when establishing a network connection, whether it's a wireless, whether it is a wire. In layman term, you can say EAP extend your authentication possibility to one time password, token card, biometric, and digital certificate. So in EAP, we have a EAP. uh multiple versions so what you need to understand from exam point of view the first is called leap leap is a pure uh password based authentication where the client provide the password and server provide the password the most secure is called as a eap tls because here the client provide the certificate server provide the certificate but from the administration point of view it is basically become very expensive <clears throat> maintenance is always a challenge so alternate of eap tls we introduce a peep but peep was a closed source peep was uh, developed by cisco rsa and microsoft and uh, in that client doesn't need to maintain a certificate so alternate of that we are looking for eap ttls then we talk about the password attacks we have a dictionary we have a brute force we have a spraying attack we have mimikatz dictionary use the predefined word list the countermeasure for dictionary attack is use passphrase brute force attack is also countermeasure is account locked policies because brute force doesn't use any kind of a source file he use their own a uh, generation of tools and based on that they drive the patterns and spraying attack is it's basically kind of a brute force where we use the same password across the multiple users but if the question context talk about extracting password hashes pin kerberos ticket in windows domain environment then answer is mimikatz then we have a dial up protocol which is used to dial the connection over the internet so we have a three major protocols you need two major protocols you need to remember ppp and slip the ppp replaces the slip and ppp has a two sub protocols one is called lcp and one is called ncp then we have a vpn in vpn is a connection to create a secure tunnel over the wan we have a three type of vpn remote access site to site and extra net remote access vpn is just like a uh you know user connecting to his office and all that side to side is two branches we have with they connected to each other and the third is called as a extra net where we have a vendor or supplier who using a vpn to connect to your enterprise now when you creating a vpn connection we have a two type of tunnel split tunnel and full tunnel you really need to understand split and full both are important split is basically two connections are there one is to connect to the enterprise and one you can use for internet 
full tunnel is all the traffic goes through that tunnel only from security point of view split tunnel is a concern because an, from the another connection there is a possibility that uh, the user can able to upload the data now when you creating a vpn client connection we have a two type of vpn client connection one is called pptp and one is called l2tp l2tp use ipsec to secure the data ipsec is very important part in ipsec we divide ipsec is a protocol which we use to protect the ip packets and uh, when it comes to ipsec two protocols are there ah and esp ah only offer authenticity integrity but esp offer confidentiality so first data plus authenticity and integrity we achieve and then we encapsulate or encrypt that with the help of esp so if you looking from a confidentiality point of view esp offer better security now in ipsec we have a two modes transport mode and tunnel mode tunnel mode happen between the two firewall and transport mode happen between two host understand in this way that okay tunnel mode is like a link encryption transport mode is like a end to end encryption then we have a key management here in ipsec we have a key management that you need to understand which is called as a ike internet key exchange it has a two sub protocol okle and uh, ickmp so that's something you need to know that then we have a radius when you handling the multi vendor authentications so radius is act like a intermediate server so in layman term you can understand the user initiating connection to vpn user initiating connection to the wireless access point all this request goes to the radius server ready server act like a triple a server who does the authentication authorization accounting and then it pass the information to at but there is a catch the catch is when ready server sending the information <coughs> it send the data in a plain text to uh, ad it mean i can see some encrypted value but i can see that okay there is a plain text username has been sent over the network <coughs> second thing is that ready does not have option to customize we we if you installing the radius you configure with triple a services third is radius using a udb so to overcome that we introduce the uh, tecas tecas plus tecas plus use tcp it has option to customization at also encrypt all the traffic then we have a cdn ultimate goal of cdn is to improve the availability enhance the accessibility but the biggest concern as the data is highly distributed nature legal regulatory become biggest concern then we have snmp is a protocol for remote management remote monitoring snmp version 3 provide the security and authentication then we have vlan which is used to create a logical segmentation in a more cost effective manner in in switch we have a two major attacks arp attack and mac flooding attack another important topic very very important is sdn software defined network it's very important for you to understand sdn so when the vendors are running a multiple devices they are using their own configuration matrix and all that they have a dependency understand in this way like we are running a apple mac we can only run mac operating system if you have a lenovo we can run microsoft linux and all that but now what happen is we are running a multiple router devices multiple vendor devices now you don't want them to follow their own logics and all that so what we we we, we want here is we want a integration everyone should work on a common parameter so all are basically connect with the control layer and control layer forward the information receive the information from the application layer it is same like i am conducting a session so what happen is there is a person who come from a grc there is a person who come from network security they share their own perspective so now what happen is instead of each and every one decide their own parameter it will me who decide who how to carry the cssp as a vendor neutral concept so same thing happen in the sdn so in sdn what happen is we have a devices which is hosted on the infrastructure layer which is also called data plane all they are basically request will pass to the so all they follow the control layer control layer is the main brain okay but control brain receive the instruction from the application plane so you can say like that if control layer is compromised everything is compromised two biggest benefit of sdn is it providing the centralized network provisioning it providing the agility and by this you can able to have a simplified administration but if your application layer is compromised if the interface is compromised so everything is compromised so that's something you need to understand in sdn we have a two type of api northbound and southbound northbound is basically coordination between the application to control and uh, northbound and southbound is basically between the control layer to infrastructure layer and then we have a micro segmentation which is the foundation of the zero trust architecture now next things important part is called as a attacks so we have a different type of attacks which targeting a confidentiality integrity availability any question specifically targeting your uptime speed and latency it means they talking about the availability then the weakest link in the organization is always protect by the defense in depth we also have a open mail relay servers 
So anyone can able to send any email from that domain. So to protect the domain spoofing or email spoofing, we use some solutions like DKIM, domain key identified mail and SPF. Now what is DKIM? DKIM is a protocol that allows the organization to take responsibility for transmitting message by sending in a way that mailbox provider can verify. So DKM record verification is made possible through the cryptography authentication. So what happen is whenever any email goes, the domain will sign those email with their private key and the destination server fetch the public key from the associate DNS and by which they verify the main domain is coming from the mail is coming from a respective domain. But in that domain, this email server are authorized to send an email for that we have a SPF record. So thin line difference is DKIM ensure the domain authenticity, email authenticity and SPF ensure it may come from an authorized email server of the function. Then we also have a spam. Then we have a port scanning. Ultimate goal of port scanning is to discover the open ports on the target system. And we use a tool like Nmap and Zenmap. You have to remember the Nmap and Zenmap tool is the name of the tool which is used for port scanning. With the help of port scanning, we can able to discover the open ports on the target systems. And the countermeasure is restrict the ports, patch your operating systems because port scanning can reveal the port information and that can reveal the operating system details. Next, we have a teardrop attack which alter the fragment offset field. The length of packet indicate is not a true length. In understand in layman term, I decided on Monday we going to start cryptography and Monday I started something else topic. So you mentally prepare for that topic and next day I change the other topic then change other topics. So every time I'm changing a new topic same like we have in computer network. If I send you the one to 300 packet and I told them next will be 301 but instead of 301 I sent 315 or 320 or 345. So it is difficult for the memory to arrange that and that lead to the brain crash. Same thing happen here also when you sending a data with offset not in a sequence offset fragment value, it collapsed the memory. Next is called as a another important topic is Smurf and Fraggle attack. Smurf attack misuse the ICMP echo request to create a DOS attack and Fraggle attack use UDP instead of ICMP. DOS attack is the biggest concern. The only countermeasure is redundant systems or contact the ISP to block the uh, IP address. Another important thing called as a impersonation is the act of taking the identity of someone else. Then we have a tailgating when an unauthorized entity gain access to the facility under the authorization of valid worker and uh, piggybacking occur when unauthorized entity gaining access to the facility under the authorization of a valid worker by tricking the victim into providing consent. We also have a dumpster driving. It is an act of digging through a trash, discarded equipments or abandoned locations in order to obtain the information about a uh, target organization. Shoulder surfing is often a physical world in, in person form of social engineering and whaling is a form of spare fishing the target a specific high individual. Another important thing we called as a DNS hijacking, DNS poisoning and the countermeasure for that is called as the DNSSEC which offer the integrity and authenticity. Do let me know how do you find this podcast and uh, for more podcasts please please subscribe to my channel Spotify or YouTube to get more updates. Thank you so much. Good day. Bye.